We are going to be changing out our steering knuckle here in our 1989 Subaru GL due to a bad wheel bearing. To save us the cost and labor of replacing the bearing themselves, I'm going to switch out the whole knuckle with a known unit. Whole knuckle including brake caliper, caliper bracket, and rotor since uh, our donor parts are in better shape than our existing parts. First thing we want to do is go ahead and remove the cotter pins, one from the <clears throat> tie rod end over here, and the other from underneath on the uh, ball joint. To remove our steering knuckle, the first thing we're going to want to do is remove the caliper. Um, for this operation, it's not necessary to open the brake line since we are not disconnecting the caliper. We're just simply swinging it away from our steering knuckle, and this caliper will remain with the vehicle. Uh, first thing we want to do is make sure your parking brake is released. Find your favorite big pliers and pop this nub off of the parking brake lever and remove the clip like so and pull that away and let that hang out the side. Then you can go ahead and undo the uh, caliper slide pin bolt at the bottom with the 14 millimeter wrench and thread that out. And now that our bolt is removed, the caliper will swing up out of the way. Sometimes it might be a little bit tight. You can use a small pry bar or a wrench and whatnot and grab into the caliper and swing it out the way. And once you have it swung out of the way, then you can slide it off the slide pin and let her hang out below. Now we go on to remove the castle nuts from the ball joint and the tie rod. I've already taken the one out of the ball joint and I'm gonna release the one from the tie rod here. Uh, there's a few tricks to getting these apart. One technique, sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't, is to whack the ball joint with a hammer. And as you can see, our tie rod ball joint here has popped out of its bore. For the bottom half, we're gonna to have to use a tool, what's known as a ball joint separator, or also known as a pickle fork. We're looking at the ball joint here, and our stud that pops through the lower control arm here. If we were changing the ball joint, we could undo this pinch bolt and remove the ball joint from the knuckle that way. But uh, sometimes those can be rusty and don't want to come apart or you can uh, twist the bolt. So for what I'm doing here is just swapping out the whole piece. I'm going to pop the ball joint itself. I'm using what is known as a pickle fork or ball joint separator. And if you can see, there's a flat side and a beveled side. With this, I'll put the flat side against the ball joint itself and the beveled side down against the lower control arm. And we'll give that a few whacks with the big hammer to pop that out of there. Alright, I want to make sure we have a nice sizable hammer. Some carpenter hammer is not going to do it. You're going to need something with a little bit of weight to it to have a nice slow impact instead of quick sharp blows. More to like push it through than, than force it through. And this is a four pound hammer which is just good for the trick. Now since we've undone our tire eye, we can steer this thing out quite a ways to where we have room to swing our hammer. And then uh, what we do is just Whack that in there until she pops out. Like so. And now we have some wiggle room to pop that out. And we're going to put our bar across the top of the control arm and butt it in behind where the uh, strut radius rod goes. And to see the placement of our tool, you can see it's going across the control arm, under the axle, over around, and we're just butting it up on the body of the car near here. And what you can do is you can just stand on that with your knee, pop that out of the way until your ball joint comes out of the hole. Going underneath the car and driven out the axle pin with our 3 16 punch and a small hammer. And now everything is free from the assembly except for the top pinch bolts holding the knuckle onto the strut itself. We're going to remove this one first. This is what locates the knuckle to the strut. 14 millimeter bolt. And when we have that one out, we can rotate our knuckle around and get to the pinch bolt on the back side of it. Remove our pinch bolt. As you can see, uh, it's going to open up on us a little bit here on this split which is the clamping force that holds it down to the strut. Sometimes when you undo these, you might need to help it out a little bit. You can use a cold chisel or a nice fat flat screwdriver and just kind of tap it in there to spread that out 
a little bit for it to release. I'm just going to use this tool just to kind of get her started to push down and get her to separate from the knuckle if you can see that very well how it's sliding off right there and there goes our axle from the transmission there you have it there is a complete knuckle assembly all right here I have a uh, junk part for demonstration purposes undoing the uh, pinch bolt from the knuckle itself where the strut goes on to the knuckle. Here you're looking at it from an upside down perspective. But I've removed my bolt and the strut likes to stay stuck on there a little bit. So what you can do, if you need to, you can use a chisel or a flat screwdriver and kind of just splay that open a little bit. And from there, the strut will come out. We're now looking at our bare knuckle assembly, bare to everything except the axle and bearings themselves. Uh, as you can see, there's no ball joint here. I had to remove the old one due to the boot being bad. And I'll be installing the new ball joint after I put the knuckle in the car. Now I'm ready to install the knuckle onto the car. I want to make sure my caliper's out of the way. And uh, we're going to be installing this part of the knuckle, the sleeve, onto the strut. Uh, be sure to clean off any rust and dirt there. You can put on anti-seize if you like. And what I'm going to do to aid my installation is I'm going to put a small chisel in here and splay it open slightly so that it can slip on so that we can slip it onto the strut without much fitment issue. For the time being, I'm going to slide the axle in just to have it in there to mount the knuckle and then once the knuckle's mounted, I'll go ahead and put the splines on. But I want to come in over the parking brake cable to where if it was connected it'd be through it and insert the axle side through and just let it hang out. Now that I'm here I can go ahead and slide this on to the strut. Should probably take a little bit of persuasion, a few whacks with a hammer. Um, I'm going to tap the knuckle onto the strut. Give a little bit of help here. Being mindful of where I'm hitting it, I don't want to bend anything. Alright, we are now installing our ball joint from our knuckle inside our Sometimes it's a bit of fuss. You can use anti-seize compound or similar to lubricate this part. Okay. I'm just going to tap it in yep. into place. And now that she's seated in her bore, I can go ahead and install the pinch bolt and go ahead and put our stud through the lower control arm. It's going to be hard to see your facial expressions anyway, so you don't have to try really hard or anything. Yeah, like the way you guys are now, but before you guys were like this, you could just see kind of Chuck and a little bit of you and you'd move. Here are ball joint control arm. With my knee, and manually guiding the uh, ball joint stud into her bore. This is much easier to do without trying to shoot a video. Be careful of your fingers so you don't get them stuck when that snaps up. There we go, now we can install the nut and the cotter pin. And we are ready to install everything else. First starting with the tie rod end. Slide that in from underneath. Throw it on your new Castle nut. This is 17 millimeters for this one and 19 millimeters on the bottom. And once you have that torqued up, be sure to install the cotter pin. Now we're going on to the caliper bracket.